Adam and Chava had one job, one task. Hashem places them in Gan Eden. He places them in the garden and he says to them, you can eat anything you want from any tree you want, but just do one thing. Do not eat from the Eight Sadas, the tree of knowledge. So, of course, we're all familiar with the story. The Nachash, the serpent, convinces Chava to eat from the Eitz Hadas, and then Chava gives to Adam to taste from the Eitz Hadas, and Hashem now needs to engage with Adam and punish everyone. So Hashem calls out to Adam and he says, Where are you? So Adam responds to Hashem and he says, as Kolcha Shamati Bagan, I heard your voice in the Gan, in the garden. Vairav, I became frightened. Ki Eromanochi, because I am naked. Vaychabe, so I hid. Huh. So Hashem says, Really? How do you know what naked means? He says, Me Gidlacha ki Eromata. Huh. Did you eat from the tree that I told you not to eat from? And then, of course, we know the rest of the story. Hashem hands out punishments to the Nachash, to Chava, and ultimately to Adam. Why did Hashem approach Adam in this fashion? Why did he simply say to Adam, Adam, I want you to know that I was watching everything. I saw exactly what happened, and you made a big mistake, and now you're in big trouble. Why did Hashem engage with him in a fashion of asking him, huh, do you want you have something you want to tell me? Huh, where are you? Rashi tells us, that Hashem did this in a way that we are to learn from and to apply to our lives today on a regular basis when it comes to our communication with others. Rashi says that Hashem knew, of course, the nature of a human being, that when they do something wrong, or if I even think that the person I'm speaking to may think that I did something wrong, Based on the way a person is speaking to me, I may immediately become defensive. And so Rashi says, HaKadosh Baruch who wanted to avoid Adam becoming defensive and lying. Instead, he wanted Adam to confess and be honest. So he engaged with him in a way that gave him an opportunity to not become defensive, but to engage in conversation. How often do we find ourselves trying to engage with someone else And we may be heated, we may be emotional, we may have something really important to say to this other person. But the tone with which we say it automatically strikes the other person in a fashion that they become defensive. They look at us not as a friend, not as a spouse, not as someone who cares about them, but they look at us as an adversary, as someone who is trying to get them, to to trip them up, to get them in trouble. And then the conversation ultimately always goes downhill. Instead, what Rashi is suggesting is that we learn from HaKadosh Baruch Hu and that when we engage with someone else, when we know that there might be a confrontation, where when we, we know there might be something sensitive that we're about to speak to the person about, that we engage with them in a fashion that uses the proper tone so that the person doesn't see us as an adversary, but the person is able to see that we're really trying to connect on some level to them. And if we're able to use this method, then we will avoid conflict, and instead, using this method will bring us a sense of harmony, even when it comes to difficult and perhaps a little bit confrontational conversations. May we be zochem, may we merit to learn from HaKadosh Baruch Hu as we are supposed to follow in His ways. And just as how He engaged with sensitivity to Adam, so too may we engage with sensitivity to others at all costs. Thank you for listening and have a good Shabbos.